Hey everybody, it's Goblinx, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. Today we're going to be playing another premiere draft of Duskmorn House of Horror. Without further ado, let's get into the pack one pick one. This is a really sweet pack. There's three super viable options. We have the Enduring Courage, great for any aggressive red deck. That is certainly up my alley in most formats, and this format is no different, so I'm pretty happy to take this. But it's also really reasonable to take the excellent monocolored removal spell of Withering Torment, and this signpost uncommon, the Oblivious Bookworm, is more than strong enough to start off with a multicolored card out of the pack. Green is also really good at splashing in this format, and uh, the Bookworm is super splashable. You don't even need that much synergy with it. Just having it sit there and draw you extra cards uh, is pretty good, even if you have to discard towards it. So, yeah, these three are great. Bookworm is probably the strongest by a little bit, um, but Courage is certainly much more up my alley for the kind of decks I enjoy. I've drafted some... Some decks that I thought were like really, really powerful, you know, had everything you need, four or five removal spells, multiple mythics, great curve, and just went like literal 03, so I kind of just avoid Cynic like the plague. Probably an overcorrection, but hey, we all draft to our personal tastes, and my tastes is that I don't want to eat any Cynic. Pick number two, we've got a beastie beat down here towards Gruel Aggro. That is an aggressive deck trying to hit Delirium early, so you can play these kinds of removal spells and uh, get extra plus one plus one counters on your board while you're clearing your opponent's blockers out. Card is really powerful. The only problem with it, of course, is that it is a gold card, so it would lock us towards red-green being the only deck that will fit in. But I think Enduring Courage is another great card for that deck. If you self-mill this with some Manifest Dread or something, this is two card types towards Delirium, so this does play well in that deck for Delirium purposes, as well as just being an aggressive card. So I like the beat down here pushing towards Gruel. Other reasonable options, honestly there's not a ton, mainly just Conductive Machete for the opposite reason. This is a super solid card to put into any deck. It's fine filler, and the, the colorless aspect of it means it fits into whatever color pair you end up being. Wow, pick three Enduring Vitality? It's the full Endurance deck today. Enduring Courage and Enduring Vitality. Super cute. I don't see why not. I think it's probably the best card in this pack. Yep. Quick peek at everything else. Definitely the best card. 3 mana, 3-3 three, three Vigilance. That's a mana dork itself. is already fantastic. And it's also giving all of your other creatures the ability to tap for that mana as well. So, Victory's a decent sign there. Although, this is the play booster era. Maybe this pack had like 3 rares. <laughs> it happens. And while we're sitting here waiting for the next pick, I do want to say... Sadly, I have failed to maintain the uh, daily draft videos forever. We did miss an upload uh, yesterday or the day before, depending on when I upload this one. I have been super, super sick this week, so it has not been fun. So pick four, Wicker Folk Thresher goes great into Green Red Delirium. It also seems like the best card in the pack, period. Other reasonable cards are like Faithful for Reanimator decks. Maybe some speculative fixing here, but this is a pretty easy Thresher for me. This is looking like a really clear path to be on. We got past a pick three green rare. Pick four, pretty great green uncommon. Started with a good red rare and red green signpost uncommon. We know green is going to be a good spot to be if we're in a, an aggressive green deck so far. Um... It's still really early in the draft to be reading too heavy into the signals. And uh, we don't know how open red is yet, for sure. Pick five. I actually like all three of these cards in Green Red Delirium. My favorites, though, are definitely the Playmate that turn inside out. Ticket was a bit slow. A bit slow for that deck. This is certainly much better than Rakdos, because you get to play the Ticket Booth Manifest, which is going to fill your grave, and then also sack the Ticket Booth later. So this is really good in Rakdos for helping hit Delirium. Green Red is a little more awkward, but Playmate, 2 mana 2-2, two, two, little aggressive creature. It's an artifact creature to be 2 Delirium card types, which is huge. That's pretty great, but Turn Inside Out is also great. Getting the extra damage in out of nowhere can sometimes help you find lethal on random occasion. It happens more often than you would think, and also just 1 mana to get a 2-2 two, two is huge, and fill your graveyard, and put an instant in the graveyard, so it's also really good at hitting Delirium. Wow! I wonder what color pair is a decent spot to be. 
I mean, Dragonfire is such excellent removal, I think we have to take it over the, the verges here. Um, but if the Dragonfire weren't in here, these are pretty great fixing. These are quite likely... Oh yeah, these are definitely better than Terramorphic Expanse. Because if you're just playing a two-color deck, then every other land in your deck is a mountain or a forest, so these are just guaranteed to be an untapped dual land. Wow, yeah, these are really good, actually. I'm so used to just not taking dual lands very highly, um, or kind of disregarding them when they're in the rare slot, that I don't think I've actually even really fully paid attention to how they work this time around. But those are sweet. Those are awesome. But we can still roll with the un or the uncommon, the common dual land here over Phantom, Anthropede, Ticket Booth, all pretty mediocre filler. God, what a spot to be here. What a spot to be. Every card we've taken is pretty fantastic so far, and literally everyone is in the deck. Oh, we finally missed. I shouldn't open my mouth. Every single card in this pack sucks for everybody in the draft. That's not true. Having one or two copies of Vanish from Sight is solid in your blue decks. You don't want to overload on them, but they're fine. Tempo removal and then Underwater Tunnel, Slimy Aquarium can be fine in eerie blue decks because you're going to get two different rooms for pretty cheap. But yeah, this pack is bad. Very, very narrow cards at the very least. Pick nine, Keys of the House is okay at hitting Delirium. It's going to get you an artifact in your grave, just running it over your 17th land. It's that or the really filler combat trick. Filler either way. Not a huge fan of Branch Snapper or Grab the Prize. Anytime you have to spend the two land cycling feels pretty bad. So it's almost exclusive to just a 6-mana 7-6 trample to me, which is a lot of mana. I'm just going to take grab the prize, but it also probably gets cut. Pick 11, random saw. Certainly at the very filler end of the draft. Some black fixing if we open up a great black rare. Particularly like the delirium card that spits out a bunch of insects, that would be a pretty good splash. We'd already have a Strangled Cemetery and an Enduring Vitality towards Splashing Black. Pack 2, pick 1. What a miss here. What a miss. The rare is double white, so it's not super splashable. You need 2 mana of its color, but it is very strong. I guess green did dry up pretty fast. There's potential to move to Boros here. I mean, everything kind of dried up, right? We didn't see anything good. We certainly didn't see a lot of white. I don't think white's the most open color to pivot to, if anything. But, yeah, I mean, our green picks were pick one... Or, sorry, like, pick two, three, and four, something like that. They were all really early. The only card we would play here at a green or red is... I mean, we'd play any of these three, but they're certainly not the kind of cards that are the quality you want to pack one... Or, sorry, you want to pick one. Actually, take the hover ship here, but it's unlikely we pivot to Boros. We'll see. Pack two, pick two. No five drops yet. I wouldn't mind a root wise survivor. Not super high on trial of agony. It's definitely fine at getting damage in. Stopping two blockers if you're very, very aggressive. But you are always killing the second best creature. Yeah, I'll just take the survivor. Solid five drop. Topping off your curve. Pick three. Betrayer's Bargain's great removal. Monstrous Emergence is great removal. I usually like Bargain over Emergence. It's a little more expensive, but instant speed plus always dealing five is pretty big. And exiling is also nice. So Bargain... Pretty high pick for any red deck for me. If you're in Rakdos, this is just like slam dunk it immediately. Pick four. There's a Ragged Playmate, but there's also Enduring Innocence. We have four green cards. We would have two white cards right now. I don't think either of these colors is particularly open. So if we get strong enough rares towards Boros... 
just play a not particularly open Boros deck or a not particularly open Gruul deck. Yeah, I need filler two drops by the end of the draft, but I can just take them really highly in pack three once I'm locked in to my direction. Oh man, so I have to choose playing white to have Enduring Innocence and Unidentified Hovership, or playing green to have Vitality, two beatdowns, and a Thresher. Twins here is great for Boros. It's that Innocence trigger. Beatdown just had to be in this pack, didn't it? All right. Beat down it is. Grab a bunch of two mana red creatures now. Wow. My lord. We are just beating everybody down today. Not with our aggressive creature curve. We certainly don't have that, but we have three copies of literal beastie beat down. Oh. There is that. I'm going to start having to play some real filler stuff, though, at this rate, like Vicious Clown. Which is super awkward. All right, wonderful. We are wheeling some two drops. They're not super great, but we need two drops. And actually, Hand That Feeds is pretty good in Green Red Delirium, because you draw it later in the game and you've hit a, a two mana four two menace instead of just a two mana two two. That is actually kind of a big deal that it is such a great draw in the late game. All right. A little bit of speculation here, but all we really missed out on was some 2-mana two 2-2 two -two Death Touchers or something. And hopefully we can fill that gap up in this final pack. Yeah, I'm not really going to be happy about any of these cards. Should fill our top end creature. At least I got to ruin the White Drafter's Day. No rares for you. It is time to draft a bunch of creatures. And there we go. Two mana, two, two. Join the party. Two mana, two, two with two delirium types. Our sorcery and instant count looks awesome right now too, right? Yeah, we're spread out. Three and four. Five artifacts, two enchantments. So we really just want more creatures. Tiny bit more enchantment creatures would be... Wonderful. Vicious Clown would not be, but he's going to be in the deck for now. All right, pack three. Give me all the great cheap creatures. There we go. Manifest Dread's a super great one. Major Delirium Fueler. And last pack, we wheeled a hand that feeds, so it's not unreasonable to think we might be able to do it again. Although this pack is very weak overall. Yeah, I'm not so sure this hand that feeds wheels. There's like an unable to scream for a premium removal spell, and everything else is situational. It depends on what decks people are playing. Yeah, no. There's only one card that I would like really shove into any deck of its color, and that's unable to scream. I guess this restricted office is pretty good. Word wipe thing. Yeah, overall real weak pack. We might not wield a hand that feeds. Ooh, baby! <laughs> Pick two roller crusher ride. I'm looking for creatures. I'd love more creatures, but I cannot pass that up for creatures. This card is immensely powerful. If you have delirium for this, it's like five mana for four damage to two targets, six mana for six damage to three targets. If you don't have delirium, it's still good. Once you hit six mana, dealing three to three things can often win a game if there are three cards that would die to that on board. This card's ridiculous. I'm just taking the Roller Crusher ride. But I have to cut some non-creature stuff for some room here. Probably these two. And then just draft a bunch of creatures. Oh, it's also another enchantment for us to randomly mill uh, for Delirium because our enchantment count's low. Yeah, it's our third enchantment. Uh, Patchwork Beastie is so good in this archetype. It's one of the best ways to fuel your Delirium really quickly. And if you do so, you're getting a 3-3 three, three worth of stats for only one mana. It might not be attacking to like turn 3, but still, that is just spectacular. Big fan of Patchwork Beastie and very happy to see it there. 
If we get enough creatures, we can cut these vicious clowns next. But for now, I'm just going to draft creatures till this hits 25. Because there's two lands here. So we want... If you subtract those, that's 23 non-land cards, which is what we want. So if I can draft six more creatures, I can cut the clowns. Another Wicker Folk Thresher. It's not the best for curve purposes. Watchdog would be the best card for curve purposes. But I can take this Thresher and probably wheel the Playmate. Somebody just takes the Watchdog if they're in Gruul. If they're in red, Defaced Gallery is certainly stronger than Ragged Playmate if you don't have the same issue we're having here where we need more creatures specifically. So let's grab the Thresher here and get one of these two creatures back. Ideally. Pick five. Ooh, wow, that's an excellent three mana creature. That is such a good replacement for a Vicious Clown. This is a three mana 2-2 two -two that picks up our best permanent from our graveyard. Plus it even mills us one, so it might put a good permanent in grave to pick up. Most Valuable Slayer is good, too. We don't have any particularly great combos for it. It's just going to help get some early damage in. Under the Skin is just a really good value play. Just a strict upgrade on the Vicious Clowns. And it's another um, Sorcery that plays like a creature. So very similar to Manifest Dread. Super good at fueling Delirium. As is Terramorphic Expanse. There's a little more Delirium Fuel. I think we're gonna... Well, we actually don't have that much Manifest Dread. Never mind. I was gonna say, I think we're gonna have enough self mill to get lands in Grave, but... Actually, no, this could be valuable. Because we have, like, one Beastie and two Manifest Dread cards. So there will be games where just cracking an Expanse to have another land in Grave is actually relevant. Towards Delirium. Pick seven, say its name is another Delirium Fueler. I don't know if we have room for it here, because we need almost exclusively creatures, but Boiler, Boiler Builder's Ripper and Chandelier both suck in this deck. So I'm going to take it anyway. Yeah, I'm just unsure I've got room for that. I like all of our other non-creatures better by a little bit. Norn or Playmate? Playmate's got great Delirium types. Norn's fun, though. Helps you get your attacks in. Norn's good with, like, good enter effects. We have, like, zero creatures with enter effects in this deck. I'm just gonna take Playmate. Pick nine. This was that pack I was like, maybe we'll wheel a 2-mana two 2-2 two or something. Then I was like, wait, this pack sucks. And yep, we didn't wheel anything because the pack sucks. Uh, found footage isn't awful in Delirium, but again, I don't really have room for other non-creatures. So I guess it doesn't matter what I take. Four mana, four, four. I don't think I have room for you. I've got better four drops. All right, cool. We got another playmate here. I'll run that over one of these clowns. Sorry, Bleeding Woods. Still looking for creatures. All right. Five ragged playmates. The deck. Sure. And another turn inside out. I might actually run that. Being an instant specifically is kind of a big deal. We have a lot of sorceries for Delirium because all of our uh, creature sorceries are Manifest Dread cards are sorceries, and then all of our beatdowns are sorceries. So we have like, yeah, we have like five sorceries and still only four instants, even with double turn inside out. So the actual creature counts. Creatures or cards that say manifest is 1, 2, 1, 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16. Go 15. 15 to 17 is a good aggro count, so we can go 15 creatures here so that I can run double turn inside out. Plus these sort of count as creatures as long as I've gotten a first creature out, those will turn into more. So 15 creatures, two turn inside outs, and then cut a land for a keys to the house, and we've got a deck, and it's pretty good at hitting Delirium here, because we have got artifacts that are going to be in the grave all the time, but we have a land that we can sack to its own ability, we have tons of artifact creatures that'll die, as well as an artifact we can sack, we have some enchantments we can mill, 
We have instants and sorceries. Those will both put themselves in the grave. We look pretty good at fueling that delirium. So pretty excited about that. 67% um, of the deck is red, 42% green. We're on a 16-10 split. Do I want to still go even split, though? So we're mostly red, but green has a double green card at 3 mana. There's no double red until 4. And then there's Enduring Courage. Yeah, I'm just going to go even split on it. With even Steven. It's like 10 sources of each. 7 natural, 1 of both colors, and 2 that I can crack for either color. Yeah, that mana base should be really reasonable. Alright, looking pretty great. We will call it a deck here. Alright, here we are for game 1. I am going to keep this here. We can self-mill with the beastie and then use the under the skin to pick up a red source. If we don't naturally draw it, we are drawing basically digging twice as fast towards it. Because if we mill it, we can pick it up as well since we have the under the skin. Oh wow, we've got even more mill. That was a fantastic draw, this Manifest Dread. So we have land, sorcery. If we hit an enchantment creature or artifact creature, we're good. Alright, well, it's awkward. Uh, we put the Bleeding Woods in Grave. It is better than Terramorphicking for a Mountain. So it'll be both sources. And yeah, now we can under the skin the green red source. Alright, there's enchantment. Uh, do I have artifact in grave yet? I do not have artifact in grave, so if I keys to the house, I can attack with beastie here. I can also go, and I want to under the skin the roller crusher right now. We drew the red source alternatively. Which means I'm going to have Beastie beat down at Delirium 2 here. Might not be worth the Beastie for healer trade. When I've got a Roller Crusher ride coming up and a beat down coming up. Okay, I think it's under the skin, the Roller Crusher ride now. Keys to the House of Mountain next turn. Oh, I guess now I'm not at Delirium, though. Yeah, shoot, I wasn't thinking about the whole Delirium part here. With this, this is the more mana efficient way to do things, where now I can crack the keys and cast the beat down, but then I'll be one card type away from Delirium when I do that. Card type away from Delirium anyway, we just play Playmate here. That gives me the second red source now. Yeah, that was not an ideal sequence. We were definitely going to pick up the Roller Crush right at some point, but it would have been better to just play off-tempo there. Play off of the mana groove. Leave a random land up for nothing. Wow, this Cold Healer is being really annoying, but we'll be at Delirium now. And just kill it. And then still have a Roller Crusher. Or I could just Roller Crusher first, and then all my other removal hits even harder. Roller Crusher does 4 damage to 2 targets right now. Sure, let's see what combat trick they have. any they have none beautiful and now beat down does like a million damage 
This will be like 10 damage if I put it on my Patchwork Beastie. Bloodsucker, cool. I'll do 10 damage to you and jam in for a bunch. If I hit a mountain, this is going to be insanely good. Oh boy. Now I get to even play the Courage for next turn. I guess I should probably spread out the threats, put the counters here. Since we're already doing mega overkill either way. They gotta play something to block or blow something up. They don't want to die next turn. Exile removal. That's sad. No value from the Courage. Okay, goodbye, my Tutu. We'll jam for seven, and we'll thin a land out here. Not a terrible draw. That is 10 damage with Roller Crusher right on board. Definitely clears a path. We don't even need to. Just needed to kill like three creatures that game to get all our damage in, and we start things off 1-0, heading into game two. Game two. On the play here, solid little curve. Now I'm guaranteeing that Thresher, so I can just curve out with the Clown into the Thresher here. Couple card types engraved for Delirium. If we hit one of our Manifest Dread Sorceries, that could be all the fuel the Thresher needs. Ooh, Patchwork Beastie from our opponent. It is the Green-Red Mirror match, but they are Splashing Black. Ooh, the Piggy Bank is also great. Yeah, our opponent's got a sick hand here. Watchdog, Beastie, and Piggy Bank. That's insanely fast. And full Delirium off the mill. Gross. And the Wicker Folk, too? Wow. Alright. This is a Nightmare. Only 10 power on the board on turn 4. Clown trade isn't even that good. There's Vibin. We're waiting for our gigantic stack of beastie beatdowns to show up. Yep, Wicker Folk is such a problem. Double blocks do kind of get demolished by one Scorching Dragonfire or something like that. Alright. No Scorching Dragonfire. Surprising. Okay. Not much to commentate until we can cast something. It's 
wildly suspicious. I would send that into the thresher. Man. It's very good in a top deck war. Consistent triggers every turn. No matter what everybody's drawn. It's putting in work. And then the draw five. Well, we have lost, but it's going to take a few minutes to actually go to zero. Ooh, or actually it'll be very quick. Actually excited to see that. I don't really want to stick around at this point. Only one card in our deck that gives us any chance at this point. It's the Roller Crusher ride. Man, why did we have to draw something that makes us technically not dead on board? I'm ready for the next game! Our opponent just had an excellent opener, and then we flooded a bit. It's been a super simple game of magic here. All right, show me that combat trick you've been holding the whole time. Not the whole time, but for a little while here. They attacked into our 5-4 with a 3-2. Oh, not going to show me it. Roller Crusher Ride would still win us the game. Not win us, but give us a chance, and that sure ain't it. Alright, game three it is. Here we are for game three. The only thing I don't like about this hand is that we don't have any two drops. We need to hit lands. And our first two draws were two four drops, which is... About the worst it can get for this deck. Our curve does kind of stop at 4 mana. And one of the best bombs in the format has landed. And it is not good at all, but we've got one as well. We've got the Roller Crusher ride. Simone's a 1-1 one, one, and a 3-3. Three, three. And then she's going to spin out a 5-5. 7-7. Five, five, seven, seven. One thing I never noticed until I played this card is that these are legendary, actually. So, they don't get to have a 3-3 three, three and a 5-5. Five, five. They just upgrade the 3-3 three, three into being a 5-5. Five, five. Like so. Threats around every corner is going to immediately speedrun them to 5 mana on the play here. That is super nasty. Hmm... Well, now I can cast my beat down, I suppose. Beat down Zamone, then turn inside out the 5-5. Five, five. Ugh, combat tricks on blocks are always so awkward as well because your opponent gets to have all six of their mana up when they go to combat. So if they have any instance of their own, like an instant speed removal spell they've been saving, like a Scorching Dragonfire, they can respond to your turn inside out with Scorching Dragonfire and just completely blank you. But when you're between a rock and a hard place like this with no castable spells, sometimes you have to make plays that can get blown out. And if they get blown out, you lose on the spot. But if they don't, you were going to lose if you didn't do anything. Because you're going to take too much damage. And them's the breaks. As I said, we're way too far behind to not be trying to do things like that. Just going down to 12 without trying to clear anything off the board.
Yikes. They get two lands off of every manifest. So they're going to have infinite mana for flipping these things up. Let's have a massive board. That exile removal. So that we're not at Delirium because they specifically exiled. Well, we're dead to removal here. I mean, if either of these is bigger than a 2 2, which is really likely, just one of them is a creature. That works too. Now all we can do is trump and take four. I don't get to trade anymore. Is far too late. Tunnel of Hate just kills us even if we kill two of the creatures. Double striking 2 2 and a single striking 2 2 is lethal. Not too much of a game yet again. Opponent had a wonderful start and we missed the land drops we really needed to get that hand operating. Maybe should have mulled there, but again, our opponent had a real good opener, so. Felt a bit like a non-game again. We are 1 and 2, heading into game of 4. Alright. Here we are for whatever game this is. Two mana 2-2 two, two to start things off. Raggedy Ann coming in hot. Undead Sprinter. Oh, that card is very good. When any creature dies, doesn't even have to be your own. You can recast from the gate the grave with a plus one plus one counter on it. Could just dragon fire that immediately, but I have a roller crusher ride coming up, and I would like to keep expanding the board here. So I like manifest dread, hold up, turn inside out if they kill one of my cards. Under the skin, no tragic. Well, let's have a land and a sorcery and grave. Instant Engrave, we are really close to Delirium already. Vicious Clown. There's the beatdown. No Delirium yet, though. I would rather work towards Delirium. And just turn one of these into a 2-2 two -two trading into the Clown. If they just let it all through, then I'm just going to drag and fire the Sprinter to slow down their crack back. Alright, I just need a land and grave. Oh wait, no, I've got one. I need a creature, artifact, or enchantment. That should be really easy. In theory. It's a big clown hit. Ten. Mm, I thought this was land five for some reason. It is not. Probably a big enough hit, and Roller Crusher Ride is a strong enough card that we're just on defense until we hit Delirium and then we use these to flip it back around. Oh dear, Egotist is a big problem. Draining me for life every time they sack something. Are they going to turn inside out here? I guess if they turn inside out, I turn inside out. Sick. If mine's going to die too, I'll also manifest, because I want to fill my grave.
There's so much stuff on their board, though. I just need lands. This is why we're running a full 17, even with a low curve. Land draws have been rough, though, these past couple games. Our average mana value is like 2.4, but we've had the Roller Crusher ride a lot. Needing at least like five mana. And ideally six mana in this game to clear up three things. Man. What is your last card in hand? We're about to cast that as well. Then another turn inside out. Okay, they did not cast it. It's actually kind of awkward for me that they didn't, because I would have liked to be able to roller crusher two creatures. Maybe it's some haster that just kills me. Now I've got a betrayer's bargain up. I have to hold the forest back. If I attack with both, I'm dead to fear of burning alive. Okay, it was Betrayer's Bargain. I guess I could have attacked with both if I Betrayer's Bargained the Clown now. Instead of like let it, letting them get for two, get in for two. I like the ability to like block here and bargain if they cast a spell instead. Cool. Okay, I have to play that and just pass. I think we just wait until the millisecond I can roller crusher ride two creatures. And as soon as that happens, we just keep jamming until the until the game's over. Now I get to attack with one creature. I should have played this post combat. Okay. Flash threat. 
lock block right now. Yes. And there's our opportunity to kill two creatures. Sure, you can do that. Bargain in response, but... At that point, I just bargain the manifested card. No longer a lethal attack, because if I bargain, I hit for 7 and not 8. So I'm just going to send in the 5 4. But the reason it's not lethal is because I have to tap the 3 3 to actually kill that chump blocker. Most valuable slayer. And there's the concession from our opponent. We are still in it. A couple early losses today, but we are 2-2 two and two heading into game 5. Alright, here we are on the draw for game 5. Got an excellent, excellent start here. Beastie into Manifest Dread. Plus a Terramorphic Expanse. Can really lock in that Delirium, get this Beastie beat down going crazy. Although, unfortunately, since we're on the draw, we don't get a single trigger off the beastie by the time our opponent gets to kill it with two mana removal. I'd rather have another card type for Delirium or be able to flip up the 3-3. Three, three. Considering I'm a little flooded right now, I think I'd rather be able to have a... Well... Yeah, I guess the mana part of Vitality really doesn't matter. It's just the fact that it's a 3-3, and at that point, like, if I can lock in the Delirium here, this is a 4-2 Menace, which is even better. Okay, let's beat down. Oop. I actually have Overkill Delirium here off of Termorphic, which is wild. It's probably better to... Hold up the turn inside out though if they kill my 4-4, four, four, get a 2-2 two, two out of it. Just manifest dread. Fair. So we're gonna have a menacing 6-4 attacking every turn now. Feels good. Feels good. Wee. That is nasty. Four color from our opponent. There's the Hedge Shredder for a 5-5 five, five blocker, but they're only going to have one blocker up, so the menace damage continues to do menace things. They're down to... Or now. I'm actually going to play another Playmate. Because if I can have either of these give the other one unblockable and then just turn inside out my opponent, that's going to be lethal. Alright. They're going to die anyway, and we are 3-2 and two, heading into game 6. All right, here we are on the draw again for game six. We've got that beastie into Manifest Dread start, which is wonderful. As long as they don't get to throw two mana removal at beastie again. 
All right, they didn't this time. Beard Spinner's phenomenal, though. Two mana, two, three lines up really well against our two mana, two, twos. And it fuels their own delirium with its surveil ability. Goodbye, Roller Crusher Ride, until I hit that thing that lets me pick up permanent from Grave. Um, so, enchantment, sorcery, land. One off. Artifact off keys to the house is going to get the beastie attacking if we want to set that up. And then we're only holding up a turn, turn inside out next turn. But we'd be at delirium. If we can mill an instant or a creature, there's actually a lot of things we could mill where beastie will be able to attack. Yeah, so they blow it up. Fair. There's the survivor. I'd like to have the mana for that turn five. So, I guess I just clown now. Well, unless they make me turn inside out. Sure. If they didn't make me turn inside out, we could have played Clown there, and then on turn four, if I don't hit a land, I can keys to the house, crack it, get the land, and play Playmate in the same turn. Now I can keys to the house, crack it, and play Bargain, but I'd have to sack something to the Bargain, so I don't really want to do that unless they hit Delirium. If they hit Delirium, it's probably worth the sack. We do have Delirium, right? Artifact, land, instant sorcery, enchantment. We've got to overkill Delirium. Okay, no Delirium triggers, fine. No blocks. I guess I could have double blocked to try to get them to use a trick and then bargained. That would have been kind of cute. Hello, survivor. Mm. They already played an instant, so that's not going to hit Delirium here. Yeah. They instant speed removal survivor, they still have to do something else to hit Delirium. No! Alright. Fair enough. I probably should have attacked. That was dumb. I don't think I want to double block against like five open mana here. If they tap out, I'll probably double block. Shoot. Yeah, we missed four points of damage for no reason. Oh god, and that gave them delirium too. Disgusting. Oh, and triggers the loner. If they have the um, flashback reanimation spell, could be the splash. Yep. They need another white source for that, but that's going to be really good. All right, well, they should be at like 14 right now instead of 18. Pretty big damage miss. Now they can start milling the big creatures to reanimate. If they ever find the second white source, that'll be terrifying. Okay, it's just a 6-5. Man, come on. Just let me draw one card. It would be naturalized too, wouldn't it? That <laughs> can't kill any other creature, but it can kill artifact and enchantment creatures. Three and three it is, everybody. We are so gone at this point. There are two cards up in hand. Creature up on board. I 
I mean, if they draw absolute poop for the rest of the game and we draw absolute gold, we could still win, but... Looks like a loss nine times out of ten at this point. God, they have a five... Yeah, they do. They've got a five-power creature in hand. That is the worst time to ever draw turn inside out. Pretty bad time to draw land. Three and three it is. Pretty average run, but we got hit with some really rough losses real early, starting off one and two. So at least we got a bit of a recovery here to the average three three run. I think this deck definitely could have done better. I'm pretty happy with the color pair we ended up in and how we drafted. The only thing I think that didn't go super well was the white speculation. I mean, Gruel was still the place to be with all these beatdowns. Um, so if we had just some reasonable long curve creatures over those in those packs, maybe the deck could have been a little bit better, but I don't think we could have gotten much better in the draft pod and this deck, just looking at it at, at face value, just reading the, the deck off here, looking at the amount of removal we have, the amount of fixing we have, the creature curve, like this is a really, really solid deck. So a little bummed to see it just go 3-3. Three, three. I don't think there is any massive flaw to this deck. It has pretty much all of its bases covered. It has great synergy. It's good at hitting Delirium. It has great interaction. It's got a good creature curve. And it's got bombs. Yeah, just the kind of lower end of the spectrum run today. Sure, there were some gameplay errors, maybe some mulligan decisions, maybe some uh, just general gameplay errors that held it back a little bit, but Three and three is going to be the run for today. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and you are interested in seeing some more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more on your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. If you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. And other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.